In this project video, I create and test some of the simplest armor ever shown on this channel. Against threats ranging from the 9mm all the way up to the 308. To try and help some people that could really use it. So let's get started. An inch steel backing it. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So, I've been busy over the last few weeks trying to crank out some new projects. Lined up is at least three new videos on HDPE, where we explore all the burning questions from annealing, compression, and laminating of high-density polyethylene that we could use in armor. And some of those tests have revealed some very interesting results in grocery bags. And I'm excited to share with you. I've also been working on uh, centered ceramics at home. I purchased a microwave and a bunch of the necessary ingredients to try to actually cold center a ceramic strike face so we could make high-end body armor at home. I'm really excited about that. I've also just recently purchased a Jeep. It was a beater and my plan is to actually try to apply some of the information we've gathered here with HDPE and bulletproof glass and attempt to actually make a armored vehicle. But before all that, I've recently seen time and time again in the last about a month or so comments showing up on some of my earlier videos, mainly my HDPE videos, from individuals from Myanmar. It's a small country that is currently in a whole mess of trouble man the uh, military has completely taken over uh, after an election I'm not gonna get too deep into the uh, politics that went on but mainly people were protesting this fact and have been outright murdered as of today recording this there's been right under 800 protesters murdered just outright by the military and Many more have been taken in, at night and have vanished without a trace. So, part of the thing that they were reaching out for is could they make armor in the simplest way? Like, what's the least amount of materials? Because they don't have access to Kevlar, ballistic grade nylon, xylon, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. They don't even have access to, like, simple fiberglass and resins. So, I compiled a list based off the suggestions from some of those individuals in Myanmar of what materials they could get a hold of. Things like mild steel, uh, porcelain ceramics, jute fabric, polyester fabrics, denim, and a few construction adhesives and duct tape. And I set out to try to actually create a vest insert or some form of armor that could handle all the ballistic threats ranging from a 9mm 5.56 five, in a 308 because that's currently what's being thrown at them and I've also tried to do some a little bit of blast protection or fragment protection as they are also having grenades thrown at them this was not easy to do I compiled well over 10 different tests I'm gonna focus on the ones that actually succeeded though so first up I'm gonna show you some of these plates now that they have been shot up and are being dissected then we're going to go out to the range, show you the actual footage of them being shot and how these were prepared and the final thoughts on how you could theoretically take this information and construct an actual plate out of it. Because some of this stuff actually worked. It really surprised me. We were actually able to stop a 308 with very simple crude materials. I'm not going to get a lot of shots out of it. It's going to be kind of on the heavier side, but it would work. So at the very end, I want to really share how best to construct these, what I learned in this process, and hopefully this could help some people out. If you're new to here, uh, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and uh, let's get started. All right, so let's briefly discuss what these plates were made out of. Like I said, they don't have access to a lot of higher-end materials, so I use things like porcelain, mild steel, and aluminum, mostly as strike faces for the plates, 
And as the material backing it, I use things like jute, polyester fabric, uh, nylon, and denim. Really basic, simple grades that are easy to acquire. And construction was very simple because I mostly focused on just duct tape. And for a 6x6 six six square of each of these, I try to maintain under the weight of 4 pounds. So that way for a full 12x12 12 12 inch, uh, what you would consider kind of chest plate size, it would be less than 16 pounds for your... Uh, in a plate carrier still quite heavy but you know obviously we're using suboptimal material here and the ballistic threats that I used like I mentioned were 9 millimeter the 556 and the 7.62 by 51 because this is what the military has been throwing at these protesters so alright well let's look at the actual plates that were being tested and at the very end of course we will discuss how to construct these plates Okay, so first up is this 9mm test plate. It was comprised of one 10mm porcelain tile with just some fold up polyester fabric and duct tape. It was quite lightweight and uh, had very little back face deformation even after being shot about five times with a 9mm. Quite impressive. There we go. Ah, it actually stopped it. Look at that. All right, one more whenever you're ready. There we go. Whenever you're ready. Clear, good. All right. Second shot from a nine millimeter, still. Huh? Oh, look at that. Just folded up polyester duct tape and we're stopping full metal jackets. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Just a single layer. That is a very light plate too. Yeah, it has a pretty thick profile. It can be compressed down. I just can't believe it's actually, you know, stopped another 9mm full metal jacket. Really, it shows you how remarkable that porcelain is, you know. So, uh, let's put one more in it. I got a box for you so you can... The penetration is not very far. Yeah. It's just barely past that porcelain. So that porcelain stop it. Yeah. That one looks like it hurt. That one did too. That one. That one. That one did too. That one. Hey! It did not skirt out. And you can actually see the depth of impact on that. Still negligible, man. That is not a bad depth of impact. Like, right there was one of them. Yeah, one, yeah. Pulled it up polyester with a ceramic strike face. Look right there. Right there. And that barely caught the ceramic. Edge. Barely caught ceramic, and it still stopped it in the last part. Yeah, the last Because part it never pole. even penetrated the front part. Yeah, look it at that. folded it over and hit the back. All right, now on to this next plate. This one was shot with the 5.56 twice and a 308. And honestly, I think it would have been able to stop the 308 had it been shot first and in the center and not on the edge. I'll explain why here in a little bit, but here's the test footage of this one. Good hit. All right. Barely a dent. Uh, it's, yeah, you can actually see. You're right. You can. There is a dent, but it's not. It's ah, polyester fabric. This is a curtain. This is a literal polyester curtain. It's a folded up curtain. With this right here, look at this single shot. This is a Thompson Centerfire Pro Hunter. This is a hunting rifle. Yeah, big old 308, man. I'm excited to test it out. We're gonna test that same plate out now with some M80 ball. Look at the size of that, real quick. Look at that, it's a big freaking, whoo! All right. Nice hit, there we go. Yep. Clear. Oh man. Yep. That's a 308 for you. 
caught the side. This is what I was expecting to see with the other one against the, uh, or this one initially, against the uh, 556. Five, yep, good to go. Okay. Yeah, so it's still stopping the 5.56 five, rounds. Definitely not the heavy caliber. Yeah. Well, it's just so Pretty much mass, and I mean, it also was a technical edge strike, so, you know, it's like edge strikes are some of the worst case scenarios. Unless it's shot off to the side. I don't know where you hit right up. Maybe that was, was my first shot. That was my second shot with the 5.56. Five, this... One of these was the uh, first shot 308, the second one was the other shot 308 because the sight is off for me right. a little okay. to the left. Okay, well, I mean, it does appear to have stopped the second one. We'll move on to a different combo and see how that handles. I can't really reform the clay on that side, so we'll just try to shoot over there. <laughs> Up next is the first plate to outright stop the 308. It was a very simple construction with no fabric backing and uh, I believe if you didn't use strips but rather full sheets of metal you'd have multiple multiple hit capability out of this plate right here <laughs> that is so crazy how powerful it is. oh bruh ah, it stopped <laughs> it actually stopped it it stopped at 308 Oh man, that would have hurt like hell. Yeah. Ooh. The ballistic concussion could have been just as damaging. Yeah. Well, you notice the depth. It's uh, it's, it's not too insanely bad, but it blew it apart. You definitely would want more tape, but it just shows you with that porcelain decelerating it, and I mean you can see through the layers of the aluminum. I think without the porcelain, that would have penetrated. Either. Pretty oh, easily. Yeah, oh, you're 100% accurate, man. That porcelain. And of course, all I had were these bands of steel and aluminum. Look what it did to that porcelain. Yep. I One mean, shot is all you get. Yeah. Someone shoots twice in that spot, you're done. Yeah. You'll really have to duct tape up that. I mean, even if you do, I just don't. But it stopped it, boy. Look at that. Boy, that's cool. Leave a mark, though. Oh yeah, I mean, when you can see the mark at the left, it's actually not, in, it's, it's much wider, which is a good indication that it was actually getting rid of that energy. It's interesting, you can see how it like split open, but there is a little bit of fragmentation, not a crazy amount. Look, look this is where I think the aluminum right here, this metal, that split comes from where this split and did this and cut into it. Yeah. And what's, yeah, but well, luckily there's not a lot. I was worried with steel, usually it'll kick out a bunch of spalling, but it looks like it caught most of it. Nothing too deep in the wood. There's a little bit right there though. I don't like the look of that. You'd almost have to coat the surface of the steel with something, but. Because the energy went up. Yeah, and it blasted upwards, but hey, it actually stopped it. So this is something proof of concept you could build off of. Heavy plate, you get a shot but it would actually stop a rifle round. Oh, three, uh, oh yeah, 308, so. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the final thoughts and discuss what some of these other plates were comprised of. I didn't want to show every single plate because it would have just taken forever. There were 10 different plates, and even though not all of them succeeded, I did learn a lot about the materials and how best to kind of combine them after reviewing the footage and taking the plates apart so first up let's just talk about that last one with the steel spalling right so generally when a bullet hits steel it has a tendency to break up and fragment much like it does with ceramics but ceramics have a tendency to pull back into whatever your backer is steel will lay it out right and we notice a little bit of that happening when we shot at the last plate with the 308 right this can be remedied with some like urethane coatings. However, if you're gonna do that, you know, you're still gonna want the ceramic strike face because it really, it's amazing how powerful uh, and effective porcelain is at breaking up a bullet. It can't do all the work for you. It's not a high-end like silica carbide, you know, tile, 
but it can do enough of the heavy lifting that other materials can be used to catch it. So be mindful though if you're using mostly steel that you have spalling issues. Like I said, duct tape it up really, really tight, add a lot of extra layers if that happens. So I'll also mention some of the other plates because there is one that was just steel. Let's take a look at that one real quick. That was plate number five. It was able to handle a 5.56. So let's look at that real quick. This plate right here was able to stop a 5.56. However, it wasn't able to stop the 308. I think this one would have had multi-hit capability against a, a normal 5.56 though. Whenever you are. That's all, folks. <laughs> wow. That was... Yeah, but that was like too comedic effect. So... That was good. But did it stop the bullet? Dun, 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 dun. It did. It did. It did, in fact, stop it. And as you can see, you know, so without ceramics, you can, you know, make a plate, but that one was also a little on the heavy side as well. But, you know, it's going to be really hard to get less than 10 pounds with this sort of material without, you know, I don't know. There's not much you can do in the way of just making a 12 by 12 without using something like high-end fiberglass or better material, right, as a backer. However, I did notice... I tested jute versus denim in a way. I shot both of those types and I found hands down jute beating out denim. You gotta remember denim is nothing more than uh, cotton. Its tensile strength isn't that strong. Even if it's quite durable, it's easy to manufacture and a lot of people like it in certain types, you know, you see a lot of DIY armors using denim. Plain and simple jute or burlap is much stronger when it comes to organic fibers. Uh, if you can get a hold of silk or bamboo fibers, those are also quite strong. So if you, you know, in a pinch, organic fibers can be used, just stay away from cotton-based ones, okay? Stay away from cotton-based ones. Go towards jute. And as far as the layering, I did folding. This was recommended to me by a friend uh, on my Discord, which you guys can join now. Armor Gate is up and running, so come on over and uh, let's have some conversations. You're gonna look. You're looking at about seven, between 60 to 80 layers of any of these materials as a backer. He recommended the folding because it kind of acts like a pillow. It's kind of compressible, so even though it starts off quite bulky, it actually fits to the chest and compresses down, kind of acting as I don't know a padding in a way. That's a neat idea, however, you know, it does add a lot of bulk to it. And I think you can get away with, you know, using it as a method, you know, here's me folding it up, or you can just cut them up and lay them down. And in which case you're looking at, for whether it's jute or polyester or nylon fabric, you're looking anywhere between 60 to 80 layers backing it. This is without any constructive adhesive, okay? And it'll definitely be less bulky if you choose to cut it over folding it, right? It's going to slim down that profile. If you can get a hold of resins, I highly recommend looking into like polyester style resins. Um, stay away from PVA glues, like wood glues. They're just not that strong from a tensile perspective. The little bit of testing I did didn't yield too good of results with them honestly and as far as it laminating up in the fabric it just added a lot of weight and didn't offer any ballistic protection if you can use a urethane right if you want to get away from duct tape in general use like a construction adhesive urethane that's going to be it has nice elasticity um and it's pretty good at absorbing energy so you know you could kind of forego most of the duct tape in favor of that kind of adhesive if you can get a hold of it and that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, you know, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I did mention blast protection. I did do some blast tests. This was done by, with a shotgun at point-blank range, and I had modified the shotgun shells. The problem with even this test, though, is it doesn't mention the concussive force that comes off of grenades. Ex explosive devices just not only throw out a lot of shrapnel, it also has 
the concussive energy, you know, the actual explosion. That's hard to mitigate. That really is. I've seen certain videos on people talking about using rubbers. I didn't really have time to test all that stuff out, so I'm not even going to really go into it. But, you know, here's a, as far as fragmentation, you know, the ceramic stuff with enough polyester layers, like at least 30 layers of polyester in a 10 millimeter uh, uh, porcelain strike face, will be able to chew up enough of even the hardened steel. But I'm not seeing it being uh, effective against the actual concussive force that comes off of a grenade, okay? And, you know, remember, this is all just, you know, an experiment. In the end of the day, you know, if you wear armor, it, you're taking your life in your own hands if you make homemade armor. And I understand that in certain circumstances, that's all you can really do. And that's why I made this experiment. Uh, hopefully it helps some people because you can definitely build off of this. And I mean, I proved that the back face deformation on some of these weren't that bad. None of them were lethal, even the big 308 ones. They would have hurt like hell though. And they would have probably knocked you down, but maybe some internal injuries, but you would have walked away from it or crawled away, I guess. Uh, when it comes to a gunfight, if you don't have a firearm, you know, armor is not the magic answer. It's just a kind of an extra life if you're lucky. You know, uh, maybe it can let you escape. Keep it under 16 pounds for a, a 12 by 10, right? Make sure it covers from here to your belly button and in between your nipples. That's the gooey good stuff that doesn't like ballist, you know, bullets in it, right? Other stuff doesn't either, but that the stuff in this area really doesn't. So that's what a 12 by 10 chest insert is made for, right? And that's what you should go for is protect that area. Most people shoot center of mass. This is where they aim. All right, guys. Hopefully this helps you. A uh, few other videos coming up in the future. Also, if you are from Myanmar, Myanmar or Burma, whichever one you want to call it, uh, maybe also check out my HDPE videos and look into some composite work that I've done and I will be doing here soon. Maybe that would also help you if you have access to those types of resins or recyclable plastics. Alright guys, I will see you in the next one. Take care.